Hey there, beer fans. My name's Steve Jaguer, and this is another Beer Native uh, Brewing Review. Let's check it out. Okay. It's not a beer review per se, but it also kind of is a beer review. Uh, I got this... I got like one of those pamphlets that you get in the... Um, and when you... I don't know. I think it came with a bag of coffee or some some damn thing, right? And it had this brewing mechanism that it seemed almost a little bit too easy. This is why I said brewing for dummies on the intro thumbnail. And I kind of wanted to try it because I think it was in Wired Magazine. That was it. It was in Wired Magazine and there was a code called WIRED05, all one word, all in capitals. So it might still work. I don't know. And for 75 pounds, you've got uh, two 10 liter... 10 liter or 10 pint, 10 pint, little, almost little brewing packs with wort. And they gave you a machine that would brew it for you. And that was it. And it kind of felt like even if the beer wasn't great, it was worth a shot. So I bought one. Let's take a quick look at what it is. Uh, here's the web. Ooh, see sexy website, right? Fresh beer made by you. That's the thing. You pour some beer and you brew it in that thing. And so that's what's kind of like intriguing, right? I have a blue one. You can choose different colors. It's obviously very appealing to the Apple market, it feels. And there's instructions on here. So I've I've gone through and I've followed the instructions. And I'm I'm gonna show you now kind of what my let's say instructions journey actually was like. Because some of it was super smooth. And some of it, not so smooth. So let's go take a look at that now. Hey there, beer fans. My name is Steve Jaguer, and this is a really weird unboxing. Uh, so this is, I, I still got the tape on. I haven't opened it up. So I'll show you what it is, and then I'll start, I'll make this part of the show. Where you get to see whether it works or not, and whether it sucks. So I'm kind of doing a review and an unboxing, but it's going to take... I don't even know how long it takes. So I feel like that was worth the wait, wasn't it? Look at this. It's like a big old poster. My book, whatever this is, some kind of instructions. So when it's all done, I can just pop this in the fridge and pull beer out of it. It's cool. I ordered blue. You can get other colors. So this, I don't know what this does, but this connects onto the back of the bum of this somehow. And oh, here, maybe. There we go. The Uplands Social Session and the Space Hopper Double IPA. So I get you know a little bit extreme and a little bit mellow. And then it says, lift up the handle and, and lift up this handle, unscrew this way and pull this cap off. I guess we're going to do some cleaning. What it doesn't say, it makes it look really easy, is what this weird piece of cardboard here is doing. It's like, I just, I just cut that. I can't figure out why it's there. And this handle doesn't, it just doesn't come up. So I'm like, I'm at step one and I... Okay, I figured it out. See? Handle up. I think this this cardboard was in here as like packing material. But when you wrap the cardboard around there and you push this handle down, it's really jammed in there where it was on mine. And I had to cut this and then get these pliers to rip the stupid cardboard out. And then actually this handle moves pretty freely. So that's where I am. Kind of a mini, a mini unboxing in the middle of all this is I just opened up one of the packs. And... There we go. So you get purifier, brewing yeast. I guess kind of like the wart is what it, I'm guessing it is. But again, pretty kick-ass packaging. Okay, quick intermission now. I'm not going to go through actually the brewing process because it was so boringly easy. It was just wash it with the little sanitizer, dump the gluggy thing in, throw the yeast in, connect the the end 
and shake it with your hand, put it on a table. That's that's all it was. There's really there was nothing to it, amazingly. And I also forgot to film it because I thought it was gonna be hard. All right, back to the video. Okay, I got it all together. Uh, I figured it out, it's right there. It's gonna sit here for, I think it said five days. The instructions on how long it has to sit is usually on the tag, actually. There we go. It comes with these, it comes with this like nice little finishing touches. That's what I'm making. They've thought a lot about the presentation with this. This is like, I don't know, I, I have a feeling people who who actively go through all the pain of brewing beer would be like, pa to this. But it's really easy. I did have a little problem getting this stupid bottom bit onto there. I think that's not clean, that bit. But I got it. And so it looks... Okay, it has been actually six days. It was supposed to be four or five, and I... Because I was away, I left it for six. But here we go. The uh, I'm in the kitchen with the dirty dishes, and the pinter is done. So I am going to try and get this bottom thing off. I'm what I'm supposed to do now is twist this, take the bottom off, and I I assume because the bottom is hollow that all the sediment and crap this is designed somewhat accurately to hold all the gunk. So that comes away while this takes all the, the, the good beery stuff. And then we put it in the fridge and then all the rest of the gunk settles to here and then we get to pour uncorrupted beer. That I think is what it's trying to do. So now let's see if it comes apart as easily as it went together. Okay. And then rotate. there. Look at this. Look at this. It's like, it's like oozing and hemorrhaging. So it's carbonated for sure. Kind of think that that's it. I do wonder, there's a kind of clever little mechanism here that seals it all up. How long that will last just in terms of how many brews until you need to buy a new one of these things. But so far so good. I'll put the cap on, I'll put the tap on, and uh, I'll come back when it's in the fridge. We have a problem. It doesn't actually fit in the fridge. You one would assume the fridges were pretty standard, but even if I do that, even if I do that, this top edge hits that top edge on the door. I was hoping to try and get it to fit in this slot here at the face of it because it's just too deep to fit. But this is too high. I'm trying to work out some logistics here. Okay, problem solved. My little mini fridge that features on many of my videos is now empty on the top shelf and beer on the bottom shelf. And this just barely fits in it. With the tap on, I can close the door. Tempting, actually. It looks really cool. But that was, like, I don't know, I don't know that this would fit in my normal fridge in the house where food is kept. And it's big and it has to go in a fridge, so it's like, if you're buying one of these, measure it. And get the dimensions and make sure you have space in your fridge first, because my, what I thought was a totally normal UK fridge, was not deep enough to have this, and yeah, it's annoying. So this is in here now. Now there's one final step. I might as well close this, which I'll have to get to when I, when this has been in here for, I can't remember how many days it is. I think it's, let's say a week, right? Let's leave it in there for a week. It's on the, it's on the case. I think it's three to five, I think it's five days. So like next Friday, I should be good to try it out. Uh, around the back of it, there's a little dial for uncarbonated, carbonated and off. Now I, there's, there's nowhere in the, the instructions, is there something that says what that really means? It's carbonated now. It's on carbonated mode. Good. It says before you tap, you flip it to, I think, off, which I guess it creates probably some kind of one-way valve that allows air to go in so beer can come out. 
Well, it doesn't just, I wish it would just tell you that, right? But what's stupid is that it tells you don't disturb the beer, which we all understand makes sense. But it also put the freaking thing at the very back, which I can't, I now can't get to, which means I have to hoof the thing forward and blindly get my hand around the back or take the whole thing out, which then will disturb the beer. Like knowing it goes into a fridge, but putting a mission critical switch at the back and telling you to not disturb the beer to me is stupid. But I will be back in five days and I will, I will show you how it works or not. And we'll maybe we'll pull our first point, pint, pint. See you then. And we are back. And it's been the right amount of time. It's been in the fridge, of course, for five days. You saw that where it didn't fit in the fridge. And I got into this fridge back here. You can kind of see it over my shoulder. And it barely fit in there. And now it's been enough time that we can have a go and we can pull our first pint and we can see if it's good. Does it suck? Does it taste like homebrew? Is it carbonated? And I'm at this phase in the instructions where you can see here, I'll show you. Um, it says, yes, next step, where I click this, we can see it hopefully together. So I turn this carbonation dial to off. It's already on carbonated around the back for five seconds. And then this is what I have to do now is I have to like ditch a bit of beer, kind of like I'm in a pub. Scrap that. And then we get a pint. It looks beautiful in the instructions, right? That should only take a few seconds. Oh, I have to put it back to carbonated. That sounds like a pain in the butt. So I can already tell you what I can see as a problem here. This is in my fridge. And the carbonation, that little dial, it's at the back. It's at the back of that pinter. How am I going to get to it? It's already all the way jammed to the back. And they stress, oh, don't disturb it. Because the sediment and all the crap and all the yeast cakey cakes are going to go around. Like It tells you don't disturb the beer, which we all understand makes sense. But I also put the freaking thing at the very back, which I, can't, I now can't get to. I don't know. Well, you're here. You're going to do this with me. All right. So let's, let's open it up. I've cut, I've put a shirt down in case it spills and let's get it. Let's do it. So let's remove where the wild things are. Guards my beer. And let's try and find it. I can't get back there. I can't, I can't get back there. So I'm going to have to push this forward a bit. Really and try not to disturb it. And I can feel it. So the arrow is pointing that way, and I need to go around this way. It's at five seconds, so slowly. So it's not to disturb the beer. I'm already taking more than five seconds, I'm aware. Oh, there's a little release. Ah, look at that. It gets to the off position. I think it's in the off position. Yes, I guess so. Okay, all right. Okay, so that's awkward, but it wasn't as hard as I thought. So we're good. And plus, it actually brings the piner forward so I can use the pat net. So that's not too bad. All right, here's the moment of truth. A little bit of beer, right? A little bit, we're going to throw it away. It's pretty good, actually, right? That's not bad. For throwaway beer, I'm not even going to throw that away. I'm going to keep that and let's have a go. It's not a million miles off a of pub pine, is it? Check it out. Let's just assess that. Let's call that done. It's not a full pint, but it came out pretty well. Pull it back. Close the fridge. Okay. Here we go. So you saw in the video, this is the session IPA, but I think it's more like a real ale session IPA than a craft session IPA, but let's not fuss. There's a big head on it. Let's take a look at the clarity. Come on, focus. It's not bad, is it? You can see me. There I am. Hi. Waving at you through the beer. There's a bit of condensation on the top, but if I let that clear, that is not terrible. The head is huge. That's 
it's not bad. How does it compare with the first bit? Let's see if it smells a bit yeasty or... No, that's okay. I don't think that was... I don't think that's fit for the pit. I think that's probably okay. I guess that's like just a precaution, right? But let's... It's a bit shielded by the head. It's a nice frothy head. Certainly carbonated, right? That's pretty sweet. Uh, let's take a little taste of the head. So this is, I think this is designed to be about like 50-50 malt hops. Which is, which is good. What I'm curious about too, is this, this is meant to be a 4% session. Does it taste like a 4%? Is it weak? Where are we? All right, so let's dive in. That is surprisingly good. I ex it it doesn't ha it has settled. It doesn't have that much of that typical homebrew taste, like where you can't poorly filtered that beginner homebrewers make. Uh, I I did eventually get past that, but that struggle is real. That is surprising. That is surprising. Let me try one more time. That is drinkable. And it's light. It's a session. It's definitely around 4%. If you compare this to that meantime uh, Record Store Day IPA that I, I didn't really do a review here, but I did one on Instagram where I said it was like a 3.5 and I said I'd rather be having alcohol free. I'd rather have a, a big drop pine trail than, than drink that stuff. This, on the other hand, this is going to serve me well tomorrow when... England hopefully wins the European Cup. Uh, having pints on hand, yeah, the destruction of that thing is imminent where I can then put the next one I have, which is meant to be called uh, Space Hopper, a double IPA. So that'll be a real test. That sounds like a, like a proper craft. So I'm going to give this quite a good rating, and I think I'm going to give the process a good rating. You saw during, the, during it that there are a few little shortcomings, like the one where I had to reach back and turn the dial. Uh, the tap handle, where the tap itself, the handle is like, is metal. Feels very robust. Everything else is kind of plasticky, but where the tap clicks on is kind of plastic. And when you pull to get that pine out just now, I realized I couldn't just lightly pull. I had to really, it feels like the, the like a, a, one of the weakest points, you know, the weakest link in the chain, maybe. So I could see, it'll be a, now a test to see how long it lasts. How many pints can I get out of it before I have to buy another one? Or I'm going to check and see if there's some kind of warranty on it. But generally, for an idiot's guide to brewing, when you buy the kits now, I think it's 14 pound for a kit and you get 10 pints. So you're, you're paying a pound 40 for pulling beer out of a pint in your, in your, in your own world. Like that's, that's not bad, right? I wish I'd had this at the beginning of lockdown. So there you go. You saw the entire process right from me unboxing the damn thing, trying to figure it out, putting it up together, the little struggles, what really happens when you disconnect it, and then trying to jam it in your fridge and realizing that you're, it doesn't fit in a lot of fridges. I did work out. I don't know if I said this in the video. I'll have to go back and watch myself. If you have a door where you can remove the shelves on your fridge, you're probably going to get it into a normal fridge. I do have one, it turns out, but it's in my house. And Allie, my wife, was like, screw that, buddy. You're not putting this huge thing in our fridge. And none of the fridge I had out here doesn't do that. But thankfully, it fit here, no problem. So consider that before you buy one, if you want to buy one. But I think it's just for fun. It's pretty cool. It doesn't replace real brewing, obviously. But if you just like novelties and you like gadgets like I do, I'm going to give this a thumbs up. Pretty fun. I'm looking forward to seeing what they introduce in terms of new beers. They have about 10 that are available. And they're all, they are a little bit real ale focused with the exception of the Space Hopper. And then they've introduced uh, a couple new ones that are a little more edgy. But otherwise, I'm going to sign off. I think this is a win. I have, a, I have my first pint of the day. I just poured myself from my fridge, which is super dangerous to have that there now. Uh, thanks for watching. My name is Steve Jaguar. Thanks for your patience. Thanks, uh, Greater Good, for making a really interesting and well-thought-out gadget for brewing. That's the end. Steve out.
Yeah, that's good beer. 